So today's video is going to be something a little bit different from me. Uh, we're taking a break from computers and consoles to have a look at a watch that was actually made by a company that I've always had lots of time for. Yeah, sorry, that was dreadful. Uh, we're going to be having a look at a little bit of Commodore collectible from my collection, the Commodore LED Time Master Watch from circa 1975 to 76. Now, obviously, we know Commodore Business Machines were uh, originally a typewriter repair company, and then, obviously, by the late 70s and early 80s, they were infamous around the world for microcomputers. For example, the PET 2001, the VIC-20, Commodore 64, and uh, later the Amiga. In the middle of all this, though, there was kind of a transitional period in the 70s when they were heavily into making calculators. And then, when it got to around 1975-76, it looked like the digital watch market was set to be absolutely massive. And it was around the time of the first mass market digital watch uh, that was actually released in 1972 and that sold for over £2,000. So around this time Commodore actually acquired two companies, Micro Display Systems and Frontier Semiconductor, who were hot new startups in the digital watch field. And it was around this era that tech companies were literally jumping over themselves to get into digital watches. Um, around this time, Intel actually bought out a company called Microma in 1972. And you've got to bear in mind, this was a time when microprocessors were still very new. Uh, HP actually took advantage of the microprocessors' calculation capabilities and introduced the world's first calculator watch, the HP01, in 1977. Uh, these things are very collectible now. They go for around, around £2,000, the last one I saw on eBay. Over on this side of the pond, Sinclair actually made the infamous Sinclair Black Watch. Now, like lots of Sinclair products from this era, like the ZX80 and the ZX81, it actually came in a kit form that you could assemble yourself. And uh, like those products, it was actually kind of dogged by reliability issues as well. And apparently, legend has it, they had more of these watches returned and they eventually sold. And apparently it almost bankrupted Sinclair. You know, a lot of people talk about the C5 as their biggest flop. I think this black watch was probably pretty close. And apparently the CPU in this watch was so sensitive to static electricity, you could actually kill your watch just by rubbing the watch on a nylon shirt. And then we come to this product. We come to Commodore Business Machines. Now, this was their most successful watch. They did actually have a few different variations on it. This was the most popular one, the Commodore Business Machines Time Master. And it's not like other products of the time, you know, when famous companies just slap their name onto kind of, you know, cheap knockoff Chinese digital watches. Commodore did actually manufacture this in their plants in Palo Alto in California. And over here in Europe at Commodore Business Machines France. And at the time, this would cost you £79.95, which was around two weeks wages back in 1977. Now, it uses a very battery-heavy LED display, and to kind of cut costs and help on battery life, the screen is actually a magnifying glass. If we went inside it, the readout is actually a lot smaller inside. And to save on battery, they actually have a little button here that you need to press to display the time. Now, this does mean if you're left-handed, it can be a little bit awkward because your hand tends to cover the screen when you're pressing the button. Now, some of the functions of this watch, it's got five functions, hour, minute, month, day, and seconds. It comes with this stainless steel bracelet that, to be fair, does feel a little bit light and cheap by today's standards. Uh, the back of it is a stainless steel back that we can see is imprinted with the Commodore Legend and the place of manufacturing on there as well. And I mentioned the magnifying lens, and the watch in here is actually pretty good. It only loses 15 seconds per month, so it's pretty accurate. Now, you can actually still buy these watches from uh, some places as new old stock. And there's been a bit of discussion on some of the forums as to whether these watches that you'll find on, you know, LED watch websites or eBay at the moment are real or are they actually fake knockoffs? Because they sell from anywhere from £100 to about £300, depending on the seller and, you know, the phase of the moon and all that. And there's been a lot of discussions on forums, and I think we've eventually reached the conclusion that yes, these things that you'll actually find as new old stock are actually the real deal. Now, for the evidence of this, we need to kind of trace it back a little bit. We've compared lots of pictures and, you know, looked at adverts from the time, and really it kind of boils down to the fact that the bottom did completely drop out of the LED watch market 
in around 1977, so we're talking about a year after this product came out. Now the price dropped from £79 down to about 16 quid in the end, and I think eventually, by around 1978, warehouses were actually selling these off for like, you know, one dollar just to get rid of them, as Commodore had actually made hundreds and thousands of these watches and, you know, the arse really fell out of the LED watch market by this time, so it was a bit of a flop for Commodore, however, they did have a little bit more success than some other companies of the time. Now, I can show you a little bit more about the design of the watch if I put it here on my, uh, on my wrist. It's actually a little bit too big for me, um, despite the fact that I've put on weight everywhere else in my body, my wrist is still kind of skinny little boy wrist, so uh, I do actually need to take one of these links out of it very soon. I don't wear it very often, to be fair, most of the time it tends to just sit in this uh, the display case on my desk as a collectible, kind of looking cool, as a bit of decoration. However, I have been known to put this on, you know, on special occasions when I may be suited up or something like that, and you know, it is a pretty cool talking point. Not very often you see someone with a 1976 era Commodore Business Machines Time Master watch. So there you go, I thought I'd give you a little overview of something a little bit quirky and kooky from my collection. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the links are in the video description below. Hit me up on Google Plus as well, and I'll catch you in the next video.